Sup, ladies and gentlemen, Columbia, and welcome back to each of one of it. Of course, if you are new to the channel, thank you so much for joining us. I am very happy to have you here. In today's video, of course, we are taking a look at the cosmic map, the new one from the brokers. <laughs> And because we value your time, the video is broken up into different timelines. So if you feel like, Akalon, I get what you're saying, but I want to move on, you can click on any of the chapters and it will take you throughout the video. I would suggest that you watch the whole of the video so that you get everything and you don't miss anything. But hey, it's your life, far be it from me to tell you how to live it. Remember to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also smash that bell. Now, the like button will actually go to Alex this week. Alex is the one that puts in all of the effort in these videos. He makes the editing happen. He makes these videos look amazing. So if you love the work that Alex puts into this, if you love the fact that there is a timeline with chapters that you can click on, then hit that like button and show Alex some love. Then, of course, to all of the patrons, Thank you so much for your contributions every single month. I will strive to do even more podcasts, more behind the scenes footage and more early access videos. And thanks to you, the quality of this channel keeps going up and up. So I can't thank you enough. If you want to join Patreon, the link is in the description down below. If you want to be part of the live conversations, then Twitch is where you want to be. The link also in the description down below. With all of that said, let's jump into it. So let's start with the obvious, the Grimoire of the Shadowlands. It introduced to us a brand new map, a map that has all of the components of the original cosmological map, the one that many of you on the channel should be very much aware with or aware of, especially if you've watched any of my videos or any of my live streams in the last two, three years maybe. But of course you'll find that the map is weird. It's sort of moved around. It's not the way that the old one was. In fact, it is completely different. The first cosmological map showed us that it's light and void that sit sort of on opposite ends of the spectrum. They are the controlling powers and all of the other powers simply exist almost to balance it out. The others are minor powers in the universe. This one, however, goes and says, no, no, the light and the shadow, they don't even call it void, they call it shadow, but there is a reason for it and we will get into it. Those are the trifling powers. Those are the weaker of the powers. The real power within the universe lies within life and death. Now, a lot of people said, oh my god, another retcon. This is not a retcon. This is another piece of the puzzle. You see, when the Chronicles first launched, Blizzard were quite tight-lipped about what the Chronicles were. They never really went, came out and said that this is the truth. This is the canonical lore of the universe. Instead, they said that it could be, right? that this is an explanation for the law that we have right now. Of course, at BlizzCon, they then came out and said, well, the Chronicles isn't actually canonical. The Chronicles is more a perspective. It's the perspective from the view of the Titans. Now, what's interesting about this map, it actually highlights the limits of the Titans' perspective. First and foremost, what I took from this map is that the Titans have never been within the Shadowlands. No, their perspective is limited to only that which is in the Great Beyond. And in the Great Beyond, it certainly does look as if Light and Void is the two major powers of the universe. However, from the perspective of the Brokers, this is not the case. You see, to them, the cycle is life and death. They are, after all, in the world of the dead. Now, I did tell you that I will explain why they call it Shadow and not Void. It is because until recently, the Brokers have never been to the Great Beyond. It wasn't until the Veil was shattered that they could make their way into the Great Beyond to go and look for trinkets and trifles and find truth, because this is what the Brokers do. But when the Veil was still up, the Brokers were very much limited to the great, uh, to the in between. So their knowledge was simply what was told to them when they interacted with spirits from the great beyond. And what they got from that is that there should be light, therefore there should be shadow, a place where light does not exist. Are these beings of power? We don't know, but we know that it should be there. Now that we look at both of these as simply pieces of a puzzle, let's start with the Titan map. Of course, most of you would be tired of the Titan map, but there's a couple of things that I wanted to highlight that is very interesting to me. The Titan map, while it does show a connection between all of the cosmological forces, 
it sort of shows them more as a balancing act, right? These cosmological forces need to be in balance at all times. They seem to be far more, shall we say, individual and broken apart. They don't seem to be interconnected with one another in the same way that you would see with the broker map. Another interesting thing to me is that the Titans do not put themselves at the center of this universe. Why not? One would argue that if they were to look from their own perspective, they would say, oh my god, we must be the most important. But no, they don't view themselves as the most important. Rather, they view themselves as the balancing scales. They are the ones who interfere in the great beyond to ensure that all of the other cosmological forces remain within this balance. Balance is very important to them. And of course, as I've already mentioned, the light and the void is the two major powers of the universe. Now let's look at the broker map, because this is where things get really interesting. And remember what I said, these are puzzles. Two puzzles on a cosmological scale. Each of them, when put together, should, in the end, give us more information about the truth of the cosmos. So, rather than looking at the broker's map and going, okay, so this is now the truth, we have to go, what could be wrong with this one? Now, the brokers had limited perspective. Their perspective is from the in-between. So, to them, naturally, if death is the realm that they are in, then it stands to reason that the other most important realm should be that of life. So now we have light and void, life and death. The first truth that I would like to extrapolate from this is that perhaps every single one of the cosmological forces is equally important. So rather than looking at it from a specific, spe specific perspective, wow, in Glando, you have to look objectively. And this could be that if we were to travel to the Twisting Nether and find another chronicles written from the perspective of the twisting nether they would put order and disorder as the two main powers within the universe and everyone else is simply serving the universe now the brokers don't have a personal sort of bias within the map that they draw they simply draw what they see based on the information that is available to them and this is where things get rather interesting contrast to the titan chronicles map the map of the brokers are far more intertwined. It seems like the eternal cycle flows through all things. You have the serpent that is eating its own tail, going from alive to death, from death to alive. The serpent also encapsulates all of the other cosmological forces, but it also appears that all of the cosmological forces are interlocked with one another. This suggests to me that the brokers in their research have found that should one of these forces be removed, the chain would be broken, the eternal cycle would wither and die. So as a piece of the puzzle, this becomes rather interesting. So rather than wishing to kill off certain individual things, it has to be preserved. The cycle at all costs must always be preserved. And as I've already stated in a different video, and if you want to watch the video on Elun and specifically about the moon and the sun in this cosmological map, then you can click the link in the top right hand corner right there and it will take you to this video about Elun. There is a moon, a crescent moon in the side of death and a sun and a moon on the side of life. Now, this immediately reminded me of the folk and fairy tale story about Anshe and Musha. The fact that Anshe and Musha battled the darkness. But that's not what we're talking about right now. You can click that link if you really want to get into that story. No, no, what we're talking about here today is the sun and the moon and the connection that the brokers have between them. Now, I believe that the sun is Zuval and the moon is Elune, and that it signifies that in order for the cycle to be preserved, life must be present in death and death present within life. So these realms cannot be uh, individual. They cannot be individualistic. They have to function as a whole. And this is what the Shadowlands was set up to be. This is why there is the crescent moon on both sides, the balancing act, Ilun, the mother of all balance. And I do believe that the origins of the Shadowlands may actually have looked exactly like that. You had the giant room that was the room of the Arbiter. And on the one side, you had Ilun, where the Arbiter now stands. And on the other side, you had Zuval. And 
together they ruled and judged the Shadowlands. Together they ensured that the balance was always preserved. As time went on, they created siblings for themselves. They created beings that could take care of all of these souls. And then when Zuval finally lost his humanity in the battle against the darkness, it was Elune that installed the Arbiter and stole the sigil from Zuval, her brother, taught them how to dominate Zuval into the Maw and now rule in her stead while she's off doing whatever. But the sigils, the, the symbolic nature of the sun and the moon, even if it isn't Zuval or Ilun, it still means that there are two beings out there, one the sun, another the moon, and they rule in unity. So here's my speculation, and this is not going to be necessarily the longest speculation because I still don't have my hands on the box. So I still can't confirm any of the beliefs that I have, but I, I do want to throw that out there. We'll, we'll treat this as a sort of prediction and see how correct I was. Zuval and Ilun are not eternal ones. They were designed and developed to be greater. According to the passages by the brokers in, in the Grimmer of the Shadowlands, they say that a being of Ilun's origins cannot, under any circumstances, be trusted. And that's not paraphrase. That is word for word what they say. Hopefully, Alex will have that on the screen for you. Zuval and Ilun were created to be all-powerful. Their power knows very few bounds. And as we've learned in World of Warcraft, when beings become too powerful, those beings oftentimes are the most ripe for corruption. Something to go wrong, and then that, that power becomes problematic. The Brokers doesn't trust that. This is why they don't trust Zuval. They say that very specifically. But it is also why they do not trust Elun, because Elun and Zuval were created to be equal in power. The other Eternal Ones are not. They are kept in check because they are not powerful enough to destroy the Shadowlands on their own. They would have to do it in unity. They would have to all work together, whereas Zuval and Elun cannot be stopped from this. They can absolutely destroy the universe if they so choose. The Titans know none of this. When the Titans met Elune for the first time, they simply thought that they had met a god or a goddess. And so they did what Elune told them to do. They built the forges. They, they helped build the Emerald Dream. All of this, I believe, to keep the Shadowlands chugging along, to protect and defend the Sepulchre of the First Ones. Because Elun knew then already that this was what Zuval was after. And the only way for her to stop it is to ensure first and foremost that she have enough followers that she can call upon. She's been quietly building an army for herself. An army with most likely only one goal, to stop Zoval. One could make the argument that perhaps Elune and Zuval cannot kill one another, because if one dies, the other will too. So that's why Elune herself does not interfere directly with Zuval. As I said already, all of this speculation can prove untrue, because I don't yet have the book in my hands. Uh, I'm going to have to wait quite a while, because it seems like no one can get a hold of the book. But these maps should not be taken at face value. They should not be looked at as evidence or as truth. Rather, they should be viewed as a puzzle, and we should try and look at them side by side and figure out which one is more true or which one lends more truth to the universe. And oftentimes, viewing them together is where the truth will lie. Now, you can bet your ass there's going to be far more videos like this one diving into these maps, especially once I get my hands on the book. But I want to know from you, what's your opinion on the map and specifically on the leaks from the book? If you want leaks, by the way, and if you want them before anyone else, the Discord is where you want to be. The Discord works over time. Whenever there's leaks, they are trolling Twitter, they're trolling Reddit, they are finding those posts. So Discord really is the place if you want true and honest speculation. And then, of course, as always, if you like this video, if you like to just like this one, if you think Alex has done a stellar job at the editing of this, please remember to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, 
smash that bell also never leave us a comment in the description down or in the comment section down below uh, if you disagree with anything or maybe you want to add something to it i always love reading your comments to all of the patrons once again thank you so much for your monthly contributions it does mean the world to me you guys literally allow me to explore and make content that i don't always think is going to do very well on the channel but thanks to you it doesn't necessarily have to it just needs to be fun so i want to thank you if you want uh lovecraft episodes so the podcast if you want exclusive content Content. and also if you want early access to all of the content on the channel then patreon is the place for you click the link in the description down below to all of the twitch subs and the youtube channel members thank you so much for your monthly contributions it does mean the world to me thanks to you this channel is still growing and it's growing stronger every single day i quite literally wouldn't be here without you so i want to thank you from the bottom of my heart guys it was my name is Akulon, and i will see you in the next one peace out fam <laughs>